Do you ever remember a time in your life, it could be when you were a kid or maybe even an adult, and someone voiced aloud that you weren't good at something? And they recommended that you do that thing over and over and over again until you got good at it. Well, my friends, today on the podcast, we're talking about why working on your weaknesses is not the smartest or straightest path to success. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Yang Pratt, and I'm so glad you're tuning in today because we're talking about something that I'm really passionate about, and I wrote a whole book on it years ago. It's the idea of working on our weaknesses versus bolstering up our strengths. When I was a kid, I struggled in math, and many a teacher told my parents that the way for me to get better at math was to keep doing it over and over and over again. Meanwhile, I was excelling at my English language classes. I loved writing. I won awards as a writer in starting in elementary school. And it's something that I was recognized for externally, but in the classroom, I wasn't really encouraged to do more of that. You know, and this became really apparent to me when I became a parent and my kids were dealing with this in school. And I was told over and over, your child has X weakness. You need to get them to do more of this. For example, my youngest, the teachers always used to tell me that she had a hard time making friends. She wasn't social. But in fact, running my own performing arts school, she was so social because she had opportunities to do so every single day in classes with her friends. The school just didn't see it because she didn't necessarily have friends at that school. It was a new school, so making friends took some time. But they kept saying, oh, there's something wrong. We need to socialize her. We need to work on this. We need to address this problem, right? It was a problem to them. But I knew my kid. She was an intrapersonal learner. She's very self-motivated. She doesn't need a lot of external push to get things done. She just knows what needs to be done. She does it in her own way. And I've always tried to encourage both of my girls to do things in a way that makes sense for them and to enjoy the things they want to enjoy and be creative in the process, right? So it's sad to me that still to this day, schools perpetuate this idea of working on weakness. Little Johnny is really bad at spelling. So, you know, when you get home, you should have them write each word 10 times. And at home, little Johnny is suffering because that is just not his jam, right? He's out there. But what I really want to stress today to you is that in our businesses, you know, we're our own worst critics most of the time. Right. If anybody else said aloud to you or someone you knew the things that went inside, that you said to yourself inside here, they would berate you for being so mean to someone that they care about. Right. We're so hard on ourselves every day in the minutia of our businesses, building our businesses, raising our families, doing the things, creating the content. And we often feel like there's a weakness, there's something missing. Well, the good news here, my friends, is that if there is some sort of weakness, you don't need to berate yourself for not being good at it. There are people outside of us who love to do the thing that we don't like to do. So what do you do? You pass it off. For me, this is doing my taxes. You know, it's just, painful to me to sit and do them. Yes, I can do them, but it takes me a really long time to get stuff done and get myself motivated enough to do that. So if I can do something quickly and put it in a spreadsheet and send it off to the accountant and they can figure it out and then they can do my taxes from there, that is way better than me trying to spend 55 hours finding YouTube videos that are relevant to me to help me with this weakness. This weakness is not going to help me get ahead if I work on it more, right? But you do have a strength. Maybe you're great at writing copy. 
but you're really bad at graphics. Guess what? There's somebody out there, like my girls, who I've trained to create graphics for me, who can help you do that thing. So let's stop being so hard on ourselves because the idea of this podcast is to really find ways to amplify everything that is awesome about you and you focusing on your weaknesses and you trying to bolster yourself up in that area is not the fastest way to succeed because there's someone out there who can either take your hand and show you step by step how to do the thing so maybe you you might like the thing someday or they can just do it for you, right? Let's stop thinking about ourselves in terms of having weaknesses. You are enough as you are. How you show up is enough. You don't need to go and be exhaustive in the search to uncover all your weaknesses and try to fill in the holes, right? It's kind of like stopping a sinking boat. You know, you start off with one hole, so you fill it, and pretty soon there's all these other holes popping up. And at some point, there's too many holes in the boat, and you, there's, there's no way to fill them all in, right? When we focus on our weaknesses, when schools focus on weaknesses of our kids and they tell us about it verbally, it's just kind of like picking at a scab, right? You do this thing until it bleeds, but it's not going to get better if you keep picking at it, right? That's kind of a gross example, I know, but that's totally what the world is kind of like, right? We're, people are good at finding fault. We're good at finding fault with ourselves and in others sometimes, just part of human nature. But when we are always seeking out the faults and not looking for the positive things that are already within us, that are already part of us, we are ignoring all the awesome things about ourselves. Did you know that the chances of you being here on Earth, being born to your parents at the time you were born, in the place you were born, scientists have calculated that, and it's one to 400 trillion. Those are the odds of you being here. So that's a big deal. You are a big deal. You are enough. We don't need to focus on our weaknesses. Let's think about the things we are good at use those to our advantage, move our businesses forward, help our kids and their teachers understand that we're going to focus on strengths. We're, you know, we're happy to address the weaknesses, but we don't want our kids to feel badly about themselves because of this. We can't let one thing hold them back when over here they're soaring, right? And we need to do the same for ourselves. We can all be up here soaring but we get so stuck in the weaknesses and trying to fill the holes that we perceive that we have that we sometimes just sink, right? And this podcast exists because I see you. I see how you show up on social media. I see how you serve your clients. I see how you are when you respond to my Instagram posts or my Facebook posts. I see you when you respond to my emails. It's time, my friends, to stop thinking about ourselves and all the weaknesses we perceive ourselves to have and start shining the light on all the parts of us that are awesome, that are good, and that can serve others, right? Will you join me on this quest to be a seeker of goodness, a seeker of light, an uplifter of our things that come easy to us? Because there's enough negative in the world. It's time to turn that negative, flip it around, and look for the positive in our situations. And the first thing we need to do is stop looking for weaknesses and start looking at strengths and amplifying all of those. Deal? Let me know what you think. Come on over to Instagram, DM me, and let me know if this episode resonated with you. I'd love to hear more from you. And until next time, go out there, seek out your strengths, seek out the strengths in others, and see the magic that ensues. Cheers. <laughs>